the recognizable sophomore sensation Robbie Avila for Indiana State goes up against Seton Hall's Alamir Dawes in his final collegiate game tonight. Will he finish it with a win for the Pirates or will the Sycamores cut down the nets in Indianapolis? Anytime you get a chance to you know, win a championship, it's always big for the, for the community, for the school. We had had a great year, but you can't have a special year unless you perform in the postseason. This entire community and, and fan base has, you know, supported us, you know, no matter what. It's going to take everything, a full 40 minutes of hard, prettiness, you no know, tough, no seen hard basketball. We're willing to do whatever it takes, you know, whatever is necessary to, to get the job done. So I believe in us and I believe in, in our team. We bring you in to historic Hinkle Fieldhouse, Indianapolis, Indiana, the site for tonight's sold-out title game between the Indiana State Sycamores and the Seton Hall Pirates. And we welcome you to the 2024 NIT Championship. Mike Corey alongside Fred Michella and Myron Metcalf. If Indiana State wins this, they'll have 33 wins on the season, tying the school record set 45 years ago by Larry Bird and securing their first NIT title. Fran of Seton Hall wins it. It'll be their second all-time first since 1953. We're in for a fun one here tonight. I can't wait. These two teams were two of the last four left out of the NCAA field. They could have put the balls away. They could have cried in their spilt milk. They did not. They've kind of proven to me that they are worthy of being in the tournament. But this one is a little more important. They have a chance to cut down nets and win a title. Let's start with Indiana State. How much fun has it been for the nation to see Robbie Avila? I'll tell you, he is the hub of this offense. The guy that uh, Coach Schurst decided when he recruited him out of Chicago, this is the guy that makes it all go. Scores, passes, can shoot the three. Think of a college version of Jokic. He's that good on this level. For more on him, let's check in with Myron Metka. Yeah, Jason Kidd has played with Robbie Avila since they were kids. And he remembers opposing players walking into the gym and saying, who is that kid with the goggles? Well, that kid with the goggles is a college basketball superstar who's earned everything that you're seeing out here today. And his parents have been with him for that entire journey. They've watched him work hard. They've watched him grind, develop into the player that he is now. And they're so proud of what he has been able to achieve, fellas. Absolutely, Myron. And now how about on the other side for the Seton Hall Pirates? We were there for game one. It took him a little bit to get going. It was Alamir Dawes that willed him the victory. He's the one guy on this Seton Hall roster that has no more eligibility left, and he's made it happen. He could have put the balls away. He willed that team to win against St. Joe's. And uh, since then, he's been absolutely outstanding in this tournament, averaging 20 points a game and knocking down the three ball at a high rate. And how about this crowd here at Hinkle Fieldhouse? Indiana State is just 71 miles away. They brought the entire fan base on Tuesday night, and they're back here at it again for the title game. Seton Hall has their contingent here as well, Fran. A little tough to tell with a sea of blue <laughs> in the stands here tonight. Uh, Seton Hall's the home team, at least on the scoreboard. But give them credit for this. They're 3-0 in Hinkle Fieldhouse in the last two years. Of course, we're at the home of the Butler Bulldogs. Our officials tonight, Brent Hampton with Steven Anderson and Jeb Hartness. Indiana State controls the opening possession here tonight. And they usually strip the first two or three plays. Let's see if they can take advantage of what they think can work. Conwell for three. It's no good. Obviously, Seton Hall will play through outstanding guards. In fact, three-guard offense. Rick Davis is really a fourth guard. Nice cut. Oh, that's a great feed from Kadari Richmond to Dylan Adewusu for the bucket. I think Kadari Richmond has been at times 
the most talented player in this tournament. A triple-double type of guy. Starting five for Indiana State. Ryan Conwell is the hometown hero as he's from Indianapolis. This is Jason Kent who scores to tie the game. Uh, we're going to see Jason Kent score often at the rim. He's the best in the country. A true shooting percentage, great at the rim. And number 14 there, Dre Davis in the starting five of Scene Hall, also from Indianapolis and a homecoming for him. Here's Conwell. Tap by Kent. They're going to call it offensive goaltending. And I thought that ball was actually off the rim. Not sure if Indiana State would have come up with it. Take a look right here. There's a piece of it. And I thought that ball was off the rim on the backside. Looked like Betty Ako had secured the rebound there for Seton yeah. Hall. But no harm, no foul. Yep. Seton Hall team will space you and then get to a lot of ball screens. Dawes lost his shoe, still trying to get it back on as Richmond goes down the lane and converts. Uh, we've seen Kadari for a number of years in the Big East. First team all Big East. He can score inside, outside. He's a great playmaker, great rebounder. This is Julian Larry for Indiana State. Trying to feed Avila and lofts it up for him, and it's taken away by Betty Ako for Seton Hall. Davis working on Conwell. Indy versus Indy. It's up, no. Sycamores will definitely push the pace. Nice cut. The kick out to Kent. Conwell, extra pass, corner three, swope, yes. Welcome to Sycamore basketball. Perfect example of the exquisite ball movement. And they had that great cut down the lane, too, initially. That's right. That cut sets it up because it brings the defense into the paint. Richmond. No good. Avila got it knocked out of his hands. And Kadari Richmond with a strong start here for Seton Hall. He kills you softly. Whistle before that. Watch the ball movement right now by the Sycamores. This is vintage, kick out, swing, open shot, slope, knocks down that corner three. Fran, it's his 111th made three of the season. Good for 11th in the nation for Isaiah Slope. And he's playing with a torn tendon in his knee. He'll have surgery right after the season. Hasn't practiced much, but the playing is, speaks for itself. The foul was on Alamir Dawes, his first. The officials are over at the monitor here with 17.07 to go first half. Good start, 6-5 Seton Hall. This tournament has been so much fun to call. You had said it because these are really the two best teams, and we're getting to see them battle it out for a championship here tonight. Well, no question. They were both disappointed on selection Sunday night. The committee has a hard job, but both of these coaches have done great jobs There's of rallying their troops. And... Uh, Looks like a common foul. But this guy's done an amazing job as a young coach at St. Peter's, Elite Eight, two times in the NIT, and a great run this year. And Josh Schertz on the other side with all those years at Division II Lincoln Memorial. This is actually his sixth time he's won 30 plus games in a season in his 16th year as head coach. Look at all this passing from Indiana State. And it's a three from Conwell that's no good. Rebound by Richmond. Kadari Richmond, he kicks it out. Dillard Wusu for three. No, and Richmond's there yet again, and he is fouled. Well, I said it before the tournament. He's the most talented player in this tournament. And you can see early in the game all the ways he affects his team in a positive way. And he picked it up because it wasn't that way in the first game. The second got a little bit better. Six points. 11 points, 16 points, and then 15 points the other night. Yeah, and like a lot of his teammates, we thought that he was disappointed when we saw him in that first game against St. Joe's.
But he's definitely picked it up, Myron. Yeah, Shaheen Holloway said when Darryl Richmond wants to be, he's the best player on the floor when he plays with that intention and that freedom that you're seeing out there today. And Myron, he said that about him playing in the Big East as well. And yeah. it, you know, and he was first team all week, so that tells you something. One of six all time at Seton Hall and have over a thousand points, 400 plus rebounds, and 300 plus assists. The foul was on Julian Larry for Indiana State. It's a two point lead here for the Pirates early. Nice bounce pass again, and taking it strong to the hole is Larry. Couldn't convert. Kent battles for the rebound with Betty Ako. It's a jump, and it's going over to Seton Hall. Good effort that time. Remember, both of these teams really only go six deep. Foul trouble could be an issue. And, and when you go six deep, I'll tell you what I think about both teams. Every single one of these guys plays a critical role for the success of their team. For sure. Richmond feeds Dawes off the screen. Checked by Swope. Dawes pulls up and drains it. Nicely done. He got Swope on his back. He held him hostage right there. Wouldn't let Swope get back into the play. Swope. Here's Avila for three. There it is. Now we saw this against Utah. Betty Yanko is not comfortable getting out on that three-point line. And uh, Ryan Avila can make you pay out there. 26 points in the last game in the semifinal win. He's three away from a thousand in his career. It's back to Richmond. He's had the hot hand. And it's off the hands of Davis out of bounds to our first timeout of the night. Let's watch Alamir Dawes. We told you he did not want to put the balls away into the mid range. That's money. How about Robbie Avila? We know he's a great passer, but don't leave this Joker open. Oh, yeah. Did I say Joker? Got to do tough things together. And together is not just these us 15 and, and the coaches. 9,000 out there with you, right? Pulling for you, your fans, your family, all your loved ones in there cheering you. It's the 9,000 in there riding with you. And it's, it's, it's all of us, right? So we got to do tough stuff together. You know, we got a chance. We've been, this has been us all year. We got a chance to go out and finish this thing the right way. Love you guys. I do. I genuinely love you. I know you love each other. Let's go make history. Let's go. Fran, we spent a lot of time with Josh Schertz, and one of the other things he said to us was, there's a lot of things these days that can tear a team dynamics. They don't have any of that. Big uh, reason why they're so successful. Yeah, I totally agree. I've been, so I knew Josh from a distance. We met a few times. Last two weeks, spending time with him. He is a star. And he learned his craft at the D2 level. Kent, and Indiana State has the advantage. He makes about 80% of his layups. That's what we call a no dribble layup, which is really the hallmark of this Indiana State team to go along with that great three point shooting. Threes and layups, that's the uh, analytics. Richmond back the other way. No good, Kent got his hand on it and tapped it out to Julian Larry. Swope. Step back over Bediaco. Rebound Davis. Dre Davis nice. coast to coast. Count it with a foul. Well, that's what we like about the Seton Hall team is that the ability for everybody to drive it. Rebound and go. Here's that first one. Watch Kent breaking the press. And then Dre Davis, he's their four-man, but he's really a guard, and that time he slips it underneath Jason Kent. Nicely done. The foul was on Kent. Dre Davis from Pike High School, which has produced a plethora of NBA talent. The Teague brothers, Courtney Lee, among others. Here's Conwell, and got to take it away. Alamir does. Kent comes back, knocks it out of his hands. It's going to stay with Seton Hall. Myron, how about 
what else we've heard from Coach Schertz throughout this week and what we just heard him talk about. Well, in the last time out, he was saying, listen, they're playing Big East basketball. You know what that is. We have to be tougher if we're going to win this game. He says, we're getting some great looks, but we got to be able to fight against a team like this. Jaws comes off the screen, and he drains the long jumper. Yeah, as good as, as good as Kadari Richmond has been, to me, Dawes has been the MVP. He has been absolutely unbelievable. And Davis gets the block on the other end for Seton Hall defensively. 14-10, Pirates by four, Dylan Adewusu. To Beniaco, right back to him, and he drives in for the bucket. And Avila got hit in the face. Uh, Robbie and was fortunate that he didn't pick up a foul on that. And I got the elbow to the to the face. It's yeah, I don't think there was anything there. Great cut by Adewusu. Watch the pass right here. And you got to play. That's Big East basketball right there. That's what Coach Schertz was talking about. This exactly team right. is going to come in with intensity, power. They're going to try to outwork you and outmuscle yeah, you. Yeah, welcome, welcome to the Big East. I lived it in two different schools. And just an inadvertent pop to the jaw. Robbie actually could have been called for a foul, but a good play on right there. Avila stays in. It's a 7-0 Seton Hall lead run here to take a six-point lead. Kent trying to cut it in half, and he does. You know, they didn't think he could do that at Bradley when he averaged six points a game. And that's not his forte, but they have every guy on that starting five can knock that three ball down. He had nine points in the last game. He's already got seven so far here tonight on three of three from the field. Dawes goes off the Bediaco screen. Clangs the jumper, and it's rebounded by Bledson. Larry, and they're going to send a foul on Dylan Adewusu. Again, ball movement. Take a look now. Drive it, kick it, draw the help. Six foot eight, Jason Kent, as Byron mentioned, high school teammate of Robbie Avila up at Oak Forest High School. He was a senior when I, Robbie was a sophomore. He went to Bradley when he decided he was transferring. They hooked up again in Terre Haute. The program record three point shooting continues here for Indiana State. He's going to keep adding it up here. 418 on the season, number one in the nation. And it passes out of bounds to Seton Hall. They had 340 made threes last year. They got 418 this season. Incredible. And right there, Robbie Avila was grabbed. Julian Larry, the reason that pass wasn't connected is because Larry threw it to where Avila should have been, but he couldn't get there. Davis on the spin. Nice move, but he couldn't finish. And Avila this time gets hit from behind, and they called a foul on Betty Aco. Uh, Davis beat his man. Bledson got to the rib, just couldn't make it. We talked about Dre Davis and how good a season he's had for the Pirates. Watch this. Dre's going to make that shot more often than not. Then watch Betty Aco just comes right over the back. Hustle play. Hutchins Everett will come in. One of the things you see that Coach uh, Schurz has done, right around this time, he'll get a couple of those... You know, uh, looks like Moore's in. Big freshman's in as well. Derek Forrest. Jake Wolf. For this Indiana State team now. 24 and 35 respectively. Set it. Swope. Gets it to Wolf. And also Xavier Bledson is in. Here's Larry. Who trades a three. And we are tied at 16. Richmond, too strong. Swope to Jake Wolf. Wolf is fouled. Count the basket.
downtown Indianapolis and John Wooden, who coached here at Indiana State 1946 to 1948. Well, he's one of the few people in the Basketball Hall of Fame is not only in as a coach, obviously UCLA, but a three-time All-American at Purdue. He left Indiana State in 48 to go out west. He was waiting for a phone call from the University of Minnesota, which did not come for another couple of days. And in the meantime, he took a job at some school out in the West Coast that turned out to be a pretty good basketball school. Pretty darn good for sure. Of course, they did have a guy named Jackie Robinson play basketball at uh, UCLA back in the mid-40s. You heard of him, right? Yes, we have. Pretty yes. good athlete. Well, this has been so fun for this Indiana State team, the community. Terre Haute, Indiana, blue collar oh. town. Coaches said, hey, it's given them something to be proud of, cheer for this year. Yeah, no question. How about the two kids from Indianapolis, Cornwell, Conwell from Pike and Davis from Lawrence Central? Yes, the homecoming here for them today, and this basket is scored by Elijah Hutchins Everett. Both really delivered. I mean, Kent had, he has 76 points for the tournament coming in for Indiana State, and then Davis had 19 points in the last game playing in front of his home crowd here. As we mentioned, only six players play a lot for both teams, and they all contribute at a high level. Here's Swope. No good. And it's rebounded by Davis. Here he comes. There's that matchup again. Nice cut. Sanders on the feed from Davis. Jaquan Sanders, who had good minutes last game, just under 17 minutes, he scored 11 points. That's a career high for him. Playing in place of Isaiah Coleman, who's with the team, but is suffering from bronchitis. And unavailable for tonight. Big win over Georgia in the semifinals for the Seton Hall team. Shot clock is down to five. Julian Larry got to put something up. Instead, he takes it to the hole, jumps it inside, and first misses. And here come the Pirates. Well, he went left hand. He probably should have gone up with two. Freshman from Toledo. Davis and Force blocks the shot. And he's fighting for it. It's a jump, and it's Sycamore's possession. For the fourth straight year, every NCAA Women's Championship game on the networks of ESPN. How fun is this going to be? We've got the specials and, of course, the Final Four, which begins on Friday. And it's going to be awesome. NC State undefeated South Carolina 36-0. And then UConn and Iowa. Of course, all the games on the ESPN app as well coming up this weekend. Paige Beckers and Caitlin Clark. I heard somebody say something about maybe Paige Beckers could be next year's Caitlin Clark. Are you kidding me? You know how good Paige Beckers has been when she's healthy? Kudos to Caitlin Clark. Amazing. They're going to love her here in Indy. Paige Beckers is a stud. Matchup is going to be incredible. How about the other night with LSU oh, and Iowa drawing 12.3 million viewers. We were watching it downtown. It was awesome. What I love about Caitlin Clark was if there was ever a game to feel the pressure it would have been that game against LS LSU. Yeah, she felt that she dropped 41. <laughs> Here's a three. Bledson. Xavier Bledson. Sycamore is up by two. High level game. We expected this. Both teams trying to prove a point. Eight assists on the eight made baskets for Indiana State, five of which have been threes. Shot clock inside 10. Sanders, nice. Great cut by Sanders. He was screening Dawes and slipped to the basket. Really well done. Blitzett's pass intercepted. Dylan had a wusu. He's trying to find Ken. A great hands by Dylan. And Dawes throws himself in the basket. He got fouled. I want you to watch this. This is excellent basketball. Sanders is setting a screen for Dawes. Watch him slip out right to the hole and a great find by Adewusu. Really good basketball. Both of these teams, in their own way, play so connected. Of course, when you're looking at a team like Seton Hall, they knock off UConn by 15 That's right. in December. 
One of only three teams to beat U UConn. Coming up next on ESPN 24, the best dunkers and sharp shooters showcasing their skills in Phoenix on the campus of Grand Canyon University, 35th annual State Farm College Slam Dunk and Three Point Championship. Right after us here tonight. My, at ESPN. my future accountant is going to be in that. My man Goki from o Oakland University. Okay, yes. Remember those threes against yes. Kentucky? We promised Sean Farnham, who's on that call, not a lot of monitor reviews here. <laughs> we'll do our best. Two-point lead for Seton Hall with under nine minutes to play in the first half. Bledson with a no-look pass looking for Wolf. And that is now seven turnovers yeah. early in this game. They're trying to hit the home run, more so than from what we've seen them. They've thrown some risky passes. And by the way, Jake, Jake Wolf has played in an NIT championship game. He was at Lipscomb back in 2019. And uh, Lipscomb got to New York. Singles and doubles, right? That was your talk quick. Yeah. You just got to hit singles and doubles. Don't try to hit home runs. Dylan at a Wusu. No. no basket. Nope. Nope. And here's what happened, Mike. When the screener, when a defender goes under the screen and the screener rolls into the defense, that is always going to be called a foul. Watch the screen. He's going to open up and roll into the defender, and just by rule, that is a foul. Good example right here. Watch Pediaco. He's going to roll into Wolf, and that is a foul. By rule. Don't, don't at me. That's the rule. <laughs> Excellent call. Pediaco with his second personal foul. And Indiana State and tie or take the lead with a three. They've hit five of them so far. They're going to go the other way. So the exact same situation on the other side. This time for the second Moors, and they get it on Bledson. I think Bledson, according to the official, turned into the defender. I don't know. I mean, what is he supposed to do? He's in his space. He's vertical. He turned. He pivoted. He didn't stick his butt out. But eight turnovers, and you can't have that. That's unlike the uh, Sycamores, but credit to Seton Hall pressure defense in the half court. For sure. Eight turnovers, eight field goals in this first half. Dawes off the screen for three. He got fouled. Conwell picks up the foul for Indiana State. You know, you and I have watched a number of games that Seton Hall has played. Watch this right here. And obviously, Kadari Richmond is all Big East, and we've already said he's the most talented player on his team. This guy, to me, will be the MVP if Seton Hall wins, unless Kadari gets 40 sure. tonight. Remember, they wouldn't be playing if it wasn't for the last eight minutes of the St. Joe's game. That's right. Took him to overtime to beat the Hawks at home. He's 81 got, points for the tournament coming in. And he had 26 in that incredible win at Walsh gymnasium great atmosphere wasn't it it was they had three games there at home 1316 in that packed environment and i think kind of helped will them to indianapolis you know and, and get a chance to play for a title i think shaheen said it best he said if we played at the crew in front of four or five thousand it would not have been the same and i agree with him but... Talking to Coach Holloway before the game, you know, we asked him how special this would be, and of course it would be for them to win a title. You just said it. They went to the Elite Eight, St. Peter's, a couple years ago. Hey, you got a chance to win a championship here. But he said, I appreciate all they've done and how much they went through dealing with me this season. That's not easy. Right. Since last June, he said. Here's Swope for Indiana State. Tries to cut it inside for Avila. It's another turnover. Yep, they are missing the mark and give the Pirates credit. The half-court pressure is stifling right now. And that's going to be a foul on Swope. And it takes us to a timeout. 7.40 remaining first half. Pirates by five in the NIT championship from Indianapolis. Sycamore's coach Josh Schurz told his team about the physicality and toughness of Seton Hall and they have certainly imposed their will early in this game An uncharacteristic nine turnovers so far by Indiana State and the Pirates have turned that into a 12 to 2 points off turnovers advantage and they are getting a taste of Big East basketball right there and they're going to have to adjust without this lead extending. Agreed. Seed Hall, Fran, also has 14 points in the paint.
So powering their way inside with their aggressiveness as well. Yep, I agree. Really good performance so far by the Pirates. It's a 7 0 run here for Seton Hall. Richmond stays with it. No, and Kent has it. Julian Larry got it knocked out of his hands. He got deflected. What do you want to see here? Ball movement without turnovers. How's that? Is that simple? How about that wide open three? Avila. Kent. And it's going to Seton Hall. I don't know if he didn't try to go after that. Might have went out of bounds. Oh, he, he was heading out of bounds. Yeah. He did the best he could. Jason Kent, very oh, active oh. on the glass. Now, you look at that build. He's not as physically built as the Pirates, but good activity inside. And this Pirate offense has got those three and a half, four guards with which to spread the floor. Richmond. Picks it back. It's Elijah Hutchins Everett for three. And it's another offensive rebound. Davis dribbled his off his leg out of bounds. And I still think that's another indication of the toughness of uh, the Pirates. Davis uh, out hustling, if you will. Kent for that loose ball. He thinks he got fouled. But, you know, I will say this, the officials so far, they've let a lot of stuff go that I like. It's not overly physical, but there's not a lot of ticky-tack fouls. Agreed. Nice take inside by Julian Larry, and Indiana State needed that. They stopped the 7-0 run. It's a three-point game. Former high school quarterback out of Frisco, Texas. And right back toss. No, Kent's got it. Watch out. Look, you're right. Dylan Adewusu. Timeout. Josh Schertz. And one of the most animated times we've seen him right now in this tournament as his team trails it by five. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Indy. Mike Corey, Fran Fraschella, and Myron Metcalf. All right, let's go to Coach Fran here on what do you do with 10 turnovers? Seton Hall's got 14 points off those turnovers. What's happening here? You basically tell your team, this is not us. Take care of the ball. We're getting great shots. They got an assist on every basket, but we can't beat this team if we're going to give them those easy turn wide ball turnovers leading to baskets. Set play coming up. Let's see what they got. Julian Larry working back baseline. Got it knocked out of his hands. And it stays with the Sycamores here with 16 to shoot. Well, they had set up something set up on the set on the second side. Larry drove baseline. Good defense by Kadari Richmond. Conwell gets it in to Avila. And now it's Conwell for three, and he airballs it. Now, if I were Seton Hall right now, I would be thrilled with the idea that I have thrown a monkey wrench into that Indiana State well-oiled machine because they're not the same offense at the moment that we've seen over the first four games. They are messing up their plans, that's for sure. It's a five-point lead for the Pirates with 5.40 to go first half. Dawes has it and has a game-high 10 points, and he has fouled on his way in. That's going to be the second on Swope. And I, I think what Josh Scherz was saying is, don't bail a guy out who's already out of control. Brent Hampton had a seemingly good look at it. Now remember, Betty Ocko's got two. He's sitting in place of uh, the big fella, Hutchins Everett. Women's basketball tournament and the final four comes your way Friday. We've got our final four special at six. Then the games with NC State, South Carolina, Yukon, and Iowa. Sunday, the championship special. Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, the show on ESPN2 and ESPN as well. All games on the ESPN app. Final four weekend. Get ready for it. It's going to be exciting. If you're an NC State or Yukon fan, you're going to be very busy. As both the men and the women are in the final four. It's pretty cool. South Carolina trying to become the first undefeated national champion since UConn in the 2015-16 season on the women's side. Well, this is excellent defense right now. Excellent. They're all over them. Yep. And Avila is going to be 
bailed out and fouled by Elijah Hutchins ever to picks up his second. That's going to be free throws here for Indiana State. You don't want to foul this Sycamore team, do you? No, you don't. <laughs> they are number four in the nation at just under 80% free throw shooting this season. And this guy is over 80%. He was the first player that committed to Josh Schurz at a Chicago. Which is your favorite nickname, Mr. Corey? Yeah, we, we've been talking a lot about him here. The, the, the Milt Chamberlain is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> Steph Corey. Yeah. There's his parents, Juan and Katie. We have to ask them. Let's see if Myron can ask them what their favorite is. Nickname is for they get they're definitely they definitely have one that's yeah. not on the list, of course. Where I grew okay. up, we know we would call him baller. Yes, he's a baller, that's what he is. He's great feel for the game. And look, even with the way they're playing right now, Fran, it's a five point game. A little zone now, they show one three one and they get diced and sliced by Richmond. What a no look pass! Yep. If you're going to play zone, you're doing it to keep the ball out of the paint, and you've got to try to keep Richard. Watch this look right now. Gets into the paint, and a great no look. Dre Davis gets fouled. Dre started his career at Louisville after playing at Lawrence Central, and has had a great run at Seton Hall. I think, as I said, one of the more underrated players in the Big East. East side of Indianapolis at high school, 20 minutes away here from Henkel Fieldhouse was the Indiana All-Star back in 2020. And then you talked about on the other side, you had Conwell, who was also an Indiana All-Star back in 2022. One of the highest honors here in this state. And there's his young daughter, one-year-old Malia, her mom, Makia. And Makia played this year at St. Peter. She was a point guard. And the lead now for Seton Hall is up to seven, and Conwell trying to change that. Misses on the three, gets his own rebound. Conwell's been short on every three. Bledson long on that three, and Kent is on the deck, and it came to him. And they're going to call the jump, but it's going to be Seton Hall possession with four minutes and 29 seconds to go first half, and the Pirates with the lead and the ball. Well, this is not a great offensive rebounding team because they space the floor and bring their bigs away, but Kent gets a lot of activity in the lane. And there was a lot of banging going on. Look at yeah. this. Look at him getting hit. He's got to be thinking, man. Well, that's, just, that's Big East basketball. Right. Seriously. And, and that's not a foul. There's no foul there. It's just good hard play on both. Although that one swing there, that hand to the face could have yeah. been looked at, but we're playing on. See that? It's a 2-3 zone that starts out as a 1-3-1. A little bit of a shock to the system here for the Sycamores in this first half. Still just over four minutes to go here. Plenty of time. Try to close this gap before the half. And Kent to the foul, and Richmond scores the basket. Watch the pump fake. Now Kent's got length, so you don't want to try to shoot over 6-8. But if you could get him up in the air, contact. And the great follow-through by Richmond, young man from Brooklyn, New York. The Syracuse transfer and the ability to hang and concentrate and knock the shot down. We've talked a lot about him. What about his prospects he's as got, his career develops? Well, he's going to get a chance to play basketball at the next level. He has to improve his jump shot. And uh, he's got to probably play a little harder on the defensive end. But he certainly has the physical ability to get a look. Absolutely will be on somebody's summer league team in Vegas, and he'll be able to prove himself. It's a 10-point lead, largest of the night for Seton Hall, and Kent will draw the foul, and he'll shoot free throws when we return. Three minutes and 46 seconds to play in the first half. You're watching the NIT Championship from Indianapolis on ESPN. Malcolm and Zubin here. Coming up at the half, we'll look ahead to the NCAA Men's Final Four. 
Women's Final Four and a late arriving overwhelming favorite. Wait till you see UConn's itinerary. What are we seeing here in the first half? Two teams that probably should be playing in the NCAA tournament, playing at a high level, but that Seton Hall defense right now, they're holding a team below 30 points that had 100 the other night in Indiana State. And I got to ask Fran, if Larry Bird had a three-point line, I think that dude might average 45 or 50 points. Oh, you're right, Malcolm. And they still love him here uh, in this part of the country. We have heard rumors that he was going to come tonight. I was with Brad Miley, one of the mem members of that great 79 team. Bobby Heaton's here. Alex Gilbert played on that team. Carl Nick still scouting in the NBA. Great team. And you know what? They did not get to the NCAA tournament in 78 because the NCAA that year was only 32 teams. It expanded in 79. But I asked, Bob, I asked uh, Brad Miley what it was like guarding Larry Bird every single day, and uh, he just shook his head. Can you imagine that? That's all you have to do, right? Yep. Exactly. That says it all. I mean, what a team they had, and that is the season that this Indiana State team is trying to match, at least in terms of wins. They went 33-1, and of course, the loss to Magic Johnson in the championship game 45 years ago. This Sycamore's team, 32 wins right now. 33, of course, would be for the NIT title this evening. But Dre Davis and Seton Hall have other ideas. Three-pointer puts them up 11. And how about the tempo controller in Kadari Richmond, who held on to that ball until he needed to find the open man, and he found Davis. It's been an excellent first half by Seton Hall. And how about trying to get this guy more involved with what you're doing, and Avila, who's going to head to the free-throw line. Let's go back and watch the other end, Mike, because Kadari Richmond's got the ball. He's kind of surveying, surveying. He draws the second defender, and Davis calmly knocks down the three ball. And I said to this to, to you during the break, Seton Hall gets credit for this poor performance so far by Indiana State. But if you're Josh Schurz, just get it to 8-6-5 because he knows this team can play better in the second half. 1,000 career points down for Robbie Avila for Indiana State. Congratulations to him. Big story right now for Seton Hall, though, is Alamir Dawes to the bench, Fran. He's got three personal fouls. Well, that's We talked about depth being an issue, and right now it is Bediaco with two, Dawes with three. And uh, Indiana State back to man-to-man. Ten-point game. Just under three minutes to go in the first half. Crab wants a push off on Richmond. Not there. Sanders feeds it out in the wing. A three ball is no good that time. By Chubak. It's a good chance to make a run. Julian Larry for three. Timeout, Seton Hall. Fran, how does Indiana State take advantage of Alamir Dawes with three personal fouls right now for Seton Hall? Well, it's not necessarily going at somebody that is replacing him. It's just getting back to running an offense without turning it over. And as we, we keep saying, and I've said this to my team a thousand times, we've played poorly for 17 minutes, and we're still hanging around. Let's get a run going the last two and a half. Dawes on the bench now with a game-high 12 points. We'll see what happens in the final two and a half here in the first half. Pirates still by seven. This is David Tubak, the freshman who came in for him, goes baseline. A good reversal. They get it over to Davis. Davis, whistle, offensive foul. Let's see, watch the push off right there. When you extend that arm, it has to be called. And Steve Anderson, a little late, but I like. I don't. I don't ever mind when they're a half tick late if they process and say, "Yep, that's what I saw." Yeah, it's not even late. It's just it's process. Get it right. Exactly. Get, get it right. It. Yep. Good call. Look out! Larry's wide open for another three.
Sanders. Not what they needed there. Julian Larry again. Bledson for the, the three ball is short and rebounded by Dylan Ade Wusu. Oh, and I thought that was a little quick because the defender was in, in his area. He thought he got fouled. I didn't see it. Zubak is trying to set a screen here, and he's just being pushed away by yeah, Larry. Larry. Larry has been physical, but why not? It's Big East ball. They're stepping it up now. Richmond, tough fade away. Into the hands of Conwell. Running the break again, Julian Larry. They can go two for one here if that shot gets up at about 42. And you know the analytics say that. Look at that pass. Avila. Nothing run Indiana State to get within two. Davis. No. Larry, we're tied. Five seconds for Katari Richmond at Seton Hall. And how about that? The Sycamores coming from 11 points down and were tied at the half. Let's go to Myron. Shaheen, you had the momentum. They made that late run. What do you have to do to get that momentum back? Got to try to get my main guys back on the court. Everybody got fouls. So I'm playing guys that I'm not normally used to playing and having some breakdowns. Obviously, these guys wanted to be here. They've showed that intensity and aggression. How do you match that with what we just saw down the stretch there? We're fine. You know, when we we had our main guys in, we up 10. Everybody getting in foul trouble. Had to put some guys in there that used to playing. So, anyway, I'll make some adjustments. Thanks a lot, Coach. So, Seton Hall which had an 11-point lead, 39-28. to 28. And the Indiana State Sycamore scored the final 11 points of the half, the tie to 39. What a championship we have here tonight from Indianapolis. Let's get you to the studio. Zubin Mahenti and Malcolm Huckabee. Guys. Hinkle Fieldhouse, Indianapolis, Indiana. This is the NIT Championship as we get set for the start of the second half. We are tied at 39 between Indiana State and Seton Hall. Hi again, everyone. Mike Corey, Fran show and Myron Medcap. What a half we just saw. Seton Hall was up by 11 points, Fran. Sycamore has closed the half on an 11-0 run. Here we are. Yep, and Seton Hall was up big early because of Alamir Dawes. He's been the star of the NIT for Seton Hall. And this is his final game of his college career. Red hot early, knocking shots down, which he's done all season long. And, and that foul was his third foul. And guess what? That's when there used to be only one Larry in Terre Haute, and he was pretty good. Julian Larry, at the end of this first half, young man from Frisco, Texas, he caught fire. He was a big part of that 11-0 run, scoring seven points. And we have what we thought, Mike Corey, a great ball game to get ready in the second half. I know, every time I say his last name, Larry, they must be saying, hey, who are you calling Larry out there? It's, <laughs> it's Julian Larry, who you're right, with the seven of the 11 points in that run to close the half. And this is going to be a fun second half, to say the least. This place was going berserk here in Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indy. Julian Larry kicks it over to Ryan Conwell, and he misses on the three to get the second half started, and Betty Ako has the rebound. Conwell has not gotten going yet, but we know he can. And Dawes back with three. So he's got to be judicious on the defensive end. Well, you heard Coach Holloway before the half with Myron talking about we got to get our guys back in, and of course he was talking about Dawes because it certainly did change the game there late. Now Dawes on the runner doesn't go. Conwell's got it. And when they get that rebound, they are pushing. Larry on a shot fake in the three, and it's off his leg, out of bounds. 
And it's over to Seton Hall. Myron, what did you get from Josh Schertz at halftime? Well, he said we got to stop shooting ourselves in the foot with the turnovers, stop fouling, putting them at the free throw line. But he said, listen, we finished the half strong. We haven't played great, and yet here we are tied in this game. So feels like there's a lot of room for improvement. That's exactly what we said, Myron, halfway through the first half. It was uncharacteristic of the Sycamores to make that many mistakes. Davis spins on catch and converts. I like the fact that Shaheen Holloway knows right where to go. And then Kennedy got it knocked away. This is what Seton Hall did in the first half. They forced 10 turnovers to the Sycamores. Now that's 11. Yeah, that's sloppy basketball by Ken. And they'll call Kent to the foul now as Davis took it in. That's going to be Jason Kent's third. This is Davis's type of game. This really is. We keep calling him a power wing or a small power forward. What that means is he's got the versatility offensively to hurt you a lot of different ways. And what he's doing right now is he's putting his head down and getting to the rim. His young daughter Malia and mother Makia in the stands there. And his family in town as well to witness a potential NIT championship for Seton Hall and the hometown favorite in Dre Davis from Indianapolis. Dad is a high school coach here who took a leave of absence this season to go to New Jersey and help raise his granddaughter. It's a pretty cool story. And Davis has put Seton Hall on top now, 43-39. to 39. Julian Larry again. Avila fakes on the three. The drive is blocked by Richmond. Remember that early three-point shot by Robbie Avila, the shot that hurt Utah. He hasn't gotten that in the second half. Look at the challenge by Bediaco. And then into the lane could have been a charge call there. Just four shots in the first half, Fran, to your point. One for two from three-point range. Yep, they've done a good job of shutting him down. And they went to school on the game that they this team played against Utah where Robbie lit it up from deep against those seven-footers. Yep. A 190 win against Utah. Shot clock at seven here. As it's going to be Conwell to put it in. They're still going to wipe up the floor. This Seton Hall team has been on a tear. They've been, they won their last three games in this tournament by an average of 18 points. Yeah, and I think what both teams have done, they, they each had an argument about being at large teams, and I think they've proven their point. Richmond called for the foul. Well, and you're right, friend. It's either you, you prove your point or you sulk and you don't want to play. No, these two teams, we can see it here tonight. They want to play, and it's the two best teams in the NIT. The basketball committee had a very difficult job. This year, there were some bid stealers. NC State does not get even into the field if they don't win the ACC. But these are two excellent basketball teams. Here's a three from Swope. That's a big one for Indiana State. They have five weapons out on the court. Back the other way, and it's Richmond that responds for Seton Hall with a three of his own. I don't think Coach Schurz has a problem going under the screen, but if you know anything about Kadari Richmond, he will make big shots. That's his first three. He's got 11 points for the game. Larry kicks it back on. It's Codwell this time, and he misses on the three, and Richmond has it. And Ryan's had a tough night tonight. It's so good in the NIT. And this foul is going to be on Julian Larry as Richmond took it in. You're right, Conwell has had a rough go around here. He's 0 for 6 from the field. Well, let's go back and watch the defense. You see Larry go under by design. And then once Kadari sees that, he's going to let it fly. And we know during the season, he's going to shoot about 27% from three, but he's usually a big shot taker. Dawes knocked out of his hands, and it stays with Seton Hall. Davis with 11, looking for 14. He's got it. That's a three. He's a mismatch issue for sure. 
And we've given you all the reasons why tonight. Inside, outside, transition, it's all there for him. Larry. Avila thought about it. Crowd wanted to put it up. Instead, he drives. He's rejected inside. And it's tapped around, and Seton Hall has it. Look out. Here's Dawes. And he scores it. Probably infuriated that he picked up his third and had to go out. And now Indiana State's got to call a timeout because the lead is up to nine. And what a start to this second half of the Pirates. Great response by the Pirates. They allowed the Sycamores back in at the end of the half, and they've taken control again to start the second half. Big shots for the Pirates. Welcome back here with Seton Hall on top 51 to 42. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship continues Saturday on TBS, the final four. And for more information, go to NCAA.com. All right, the big story, the travel issues for UConn getting out to Phoenix. They didn't arrive until 3.30 a.m. this morning. Yeah, you see that, gentlemen, by the way, we'll talk about that in a second because Dan Hurley was not happy with the travel issues. The man on the right, the man you see in the picture, that's Adrian Griffin, who was an outstanding player at Seton Hall, long NBA career, NBA head coach. By the way, Adrian, you did a hell of a job in Milwaukee. And uh, 30 and 12, and he got fired. But you know, Danny Hurley's going to use this. It's going to be a, it's going to be a cause to left. They will be ready Saturday night. Trust me. That's all you need to do is pour any uh, fuel on Danny Hurley's right. fire. That's what I was going to say. Nice cut here, and Avila able to find Isaiah Swope. All right, we saw a great run by the Sycamores to end the first half, but their defense has got to pick out, pick it up. Well, the crowd's starting to pick it up here. Richmond, no good. Larry, it was Swope calling for it. And he scores it inside. Another response here coming by Indiana State. Five point game. Dawes. No. Kent. Well, they want to push it. Swope, step back. And it's no good. Rebound by Richmond. And Larry got his hands on that pass. And it's going to be a foul. Remember this team, the Sycamores average 85 a game. They don't mind running. And even though they only play six, they're used to this. Watch Swope to the rim. And that's with a torn meniscus, by the way. Coach says, push it. He says, I like it. Five-point game. Avila. It's Conwell. It's a three. Short. He keeps he keeps ending up shooting the ball short. Conwell's been as good as any player in the Valley over the last month, but not tonight. One of those nights, at least for right now. Eighth rebound by Katari Richmond for Seton Hall, by the way. Here's Davis. And it's just so powerful in those drives to the hole. They have so many weapons in that starting five, but it's been Davis, Richmond, Dawes. How about Conwell? 0 for 7. Yep. 0 for 7 from 3. You don't see that. He had 27 in the last game. We have not seen that this season out of him. That's for sure. He averages close to 17 of all games. Andre Davis, we keep talking about it. He's just so hard to guard because he's got so many ways to hurt you on the offensive end. And it's such a great homecoming for him to be able to come home over the last three days and play well. Well, and that's the thing. We thought it was a great one for Conwell from that game on Tuesday night, but he's not having it so far here in this championship matchup. We'll see if that changes. Still 14 and change to go. Oh, nice take and a block. It's going to be a goal 10 as Swope took it in. They call the goal 10 on Davis. Holloway can't believe it. Well, that 
Shaheen should know. He knows the rule. You make the call so you can at least take a look at it later. If it hits the backboard, now from this angle, it looks like it hits the backboard first. It does. So it's close. It's going to count. And you know what? Like, that's how amazing these officials are. They had to go do that in real time, Fran. If you're a fan of either team, you think they stink. If you're a basketball fan, you realize they get about 95% right. Put a whistle on yourself before you start this. Yeah, that's impressive. They will check it, though, during the next media timeout to confirm it. 53 to 48. Here's the three ball. It's Sanders. It's no good. Yeah, I thought that ball was deflected a little bit. Conwell. Oh, good fake. There's Avila for three. Basketball in April. Don't get any better than this. He just saw his dad won. He loved it. It's a two-point game. Dawes for three. That's a foul on Beniaka. Big one because that's number four. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. It doesn't matter what nickname you give him. Just call him a baller because he can play. Guess what? Pop's happy. Juan, what do you think? One of the all-time greats, the movie Hoosiers, filmed here at historic Hanko Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Morris Valenis who was the actor who played Jimmy Chitwood and members of the cast here tonight prior to this game. I got something to say. All right, say what you got to say. I don't know if we'll make any change, but I figured it's time for me to start playing ball. But there's one thing. I play Coach Days. He goes, I go. We did a bunch of acting so far here this week, Fran. It's been a lot of fun. We've had fun, yeah. man. That, the, 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 a lot of the uh, cast of that crew is here. I saw Dr. Steve Holler in the stands. who played in that movie, a Warsaw High great. Nice job. Swope with a bucket for Indiana State. He's playing with a knee that's going to have surgery soon after the season. Hasn't practiced for two months. We are tied at 53. Richmond slashes through. He gets the bucket of foul and hitting the deck hard is Larry. All right. Let's hard to guard. Here. Hard to guard. First of all, hard to guard Kadari Richmond when he puts his head down. I would definitely take a look at this, but I don't think they will. No, and I think they will. The foul is on Avila, his first. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Larry and Elijah Hutchins Everett getting tangled up. Now, Larry was hooking Hutchins. We go back and watch this, and we'll let the officials sort this out. Hutchins was trying to get Larry's arm out of the way. And I have a feeling this is not going to be much ado about nothing. They watch the two tangle up. Yeah, yeah, okay. not much to do about nothing. Yeah. Good, good piece of officiating. Both guys tangled up, and then Hutchins Everett kind of pushes him off a little bit. But uh, right. I thought that was a good piece of officiating right there. Yeah, I agree, Fran. I mean, in the physical nature of this game, and it's 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 gone both ways. By the way, a nice job. If you're an Indiana State fan, you think it's a foul on Everett Hutchins. If sure. you're a Seton Hall fan, right? You, you, think, you absolutely think it's a foul on Larry. I thought that was a good piece of officiating. More importantly is, Kadari Richmond can take this game over. Brent Hampton, Steve Anderson, and Jeb Hartness are our officials here tonight. And you're right about Richmond. He's got 13 points here. we got to get the clock right as well. Uh, Jeb Hartness ref this past weekend in the Sweet 16. Steve Anderson, Brett Hampton, two very good officials. 
They're probably just as, as excited as we are working in April. Absolutely. And these fans are too here in this sold out environment tonight from Hankel Fieldhouse. And Richmond caps off the three point play. Yeah, he's dangerous because you know he can get going and he is very hard to guard. Conwell gets to Avila for three of the tie. That's not there. And Richmond, how many rebounds to that? That's number nine. Watch him. Watch this. And Hutch is ever going to take it away. And it's Swope. And he lost the hand all the way up. Conwell tried to collect it. Tripped over his own teammate. And it's out of bounds to Seton Hall. If you're watching at home, the intensity level on the court is awesome. Both of these teams bitterly disappointed on Selection Sunday have rallied as you have to do in the NIT and they're playing in early April. Conwell takes a seat. we got Xavier Bledson back in. Number zero for Indiana State. Dylan Adewusu hands off to Goss. Gagari great in pick and roll. Back inside, Elijah Hutchins Everett over Avila, yes. Nicely done by the big fella, took his time. It's a five-point lead for the Pirates. They've led by as many as 11 tonight. The largest lead for Indiana State has been three. Kent for three, way off. And it's out of bounds, knocked out by Seton Hall. Keep in mind, Mike, people at home want to know why there's not an under-12 timeout tonight. These are experimental rules in the second half, correct? Great point, Fran. The timeouts are now under 17, 14, 11, 8, and 4 here in the NIT. Excellent observation there as Avila goes in. He wants the foul. He'll take the two anyhow, and it's a three-point game. Both, I told this, I told you earlier, the officials are letting them play to a to a good point. They don't want to foul anybody out tonight. Well, if you're Indiana State and you're not used to it, you better get used to it in a hurry, because that's this type of game here tonight. Yep. Does. Foul up top before that. It's on Swope. That's his third. Kent's got three, Betty, and, and Swope's got three. And for Seton Hall, Betty Ako sitting down with four. It's in the Dylan Ade Wusu for Seton Hall. Powers is way in on Bledson. Richmond gathers. Goes baseline. That's an offensive. And now we've got a timeout. Under 11 to go here in this NIT championship tonight from Indianapolis. It's a three-point game. Everybody's competing. Coaches, players, fans, moms. Everybody's getting involved. Why not? This is a ball game, folks. Wow. Love this. Zubin Mahenti in our college basketball studios. I think you remember this guy owning a Thursday night last month where he hit 10 threes. He's next to the Wooden Award winner, our colleague Jay Williams. Jack Golke. Can he take number three on that jersey, hit ten more threes tonight, and win the college slam dunk at three-point championships? Fellas, it's next. That guy played four years at Hillsdale College before transferring to uh, Oakland and playing for our good friend Craig Campy. Yep. And you see a couple other guys who've been stars tonight. Robbie Avila, every bit as good as advertised. And Gray Davis, I told you, he easily could have been most improved player in the Big East this year. Big East has got to be proud of the Seton Hall team. They made a point. Pitts with a flush. You love coming out of a timeout, recognizing a coverage. That time they got two on the ball, and we know that that guy, Kent, is the best in the country at cutting to the basket. That's proven. 
Avila with his fourth assist of the night. 19 assists on the 21 made baskets for Indiana State. Here's Davis. Runs into a roadblock. Back out to Dylan Adewusu. And it's Richmond. What a night he's had. It continues. He's too strong. Right now, there's nobody in blue that can guard him because of his quickness and strength. And Big East teams have had the game plan for that all season. Well, 6 6 2 10. And these five senior starters for Seton Hall, they want to end their season with a championship, right, Myron? Playing. But the reason that they're playing in the NIT, they had a 30 minute meeting, Gene said, and said, Yeah, coach, we want to play. A couple of rough practices early, but then they were the ones leading the charge. We said, Let's make something of our season and finish strong. And Myron, it's such a great point. Last year when they got into the NIT, Shaheen Holloway told this team we're playing. This year, he gave those seniors an option. They chose to play. And after that slow start against St. Joe's, they've really revved it up. And I get back to the Big East. I said this, the basketball committee has a tough job. But three Big East teams in the NCAA tournament, that was the big mistake. And St. John, Seton Hall for sure. That healthy enough resume. Yeah, well, Pirates, Pirates certainly trying to prove that here tonight. Dylan Eddy Wusu gets the two. The foul, by the way, was on Avila for Indiana State on that offensive. 13 turnovers right now in this game for Indiana State. It's Bledson, and he's fouled. Count it. The Pirates want to travel, yeah. The only player that transferred from Lincoln Memorial with Josh Schurz. Take a look. The sixth man of the year in the Valley. Little power, a little bump. And remember, he and his mom begged Josh Schurz to take him with them to Division I. Josh wasn't sure he could play at this level. And as good a coach as Josh Schurz is, this kid proved his coach wrong. He certainly did. You're right. His mother, Tiffany. And Xavier Bledson saying, yeah, we want to play with you, coach. And the sixth man of the year in the Missouri Valley. He's played in all 38 games this year, now 39. He started seven. He's really the main guy, though, that comes off the bench. And he's third on this team in assists as well. He's got over 100 assists on the season. A fun player to watch, and he's got a chance to cut this lead down to two. Third foul on Dylan Adewusu for Seton Hall. Hang on tight, everyone. We still have 9.15 to go. Davis. No. Remember, Swope had 15 in the second half the other night. Gladson. No looks in the corner. It's a three for the lead by Larry. I think he's the best passer on this team, Xavier Bledson. Take a look, watch him survey, sees if the double comes, and he finds Larry in the corner. No, not Larry Bird. Julian Larry knocking it down like the legend. How about so being in tune with your team, Fran, knowing where your guys are? This started back in the summertime when these guys got together and really bonded. And look what they're in search of here. Their first postseason championship would be the first NIT title, and they would tie the 1979 team with Larry Bird with 33 wins, which would tie the most in school history. The fans here coming out in full force. Seton Hall trying for their second NIT championship, the first since 53. Yeah, that was 71 years ago. Yes. DJ Carlissimo, my friend, not the coach of that team. That would have been the great Honey Russell Hall of Famer, but... The passion on the court right now is palpable. Nine lead changes. That's a push off. Yep. And that's a foul on Richmond. 
It's just his second, but it turns it back over to Indiana State. Listen, I said this earlier. That, that could have been a foul call by Larry right there. They're letting both teams play, but I thought that was a foul on Larry. That one had to be called, and I am totally in agreement with Kadari Richmond. Both teams better adjust to the fact that the referees tonight are letting these guys play physically. Pardon me, it's his third. Coming up on eight minutes to play. One point lead, Sycamore's Bledson. Working in on Dylan Adewusu. He spins by him. Got it! Does for three. We're tied again. Oh, big shot. Smoke went under, and Josh Scherz, as he ran by, said, chase him. Do not give him space. Dawes, he is money. That stops at Indiana State. 8-0 run. Dawes with 17. It's a game high. Back door. Oh, and a foul is called as Swope got the feed from Avila, and he was about to throw down. That's uh, great basketball right here. Seven twenty-five to go in the NIT championship. We're tied at 65. Watch the beauty of this Sycamore offense. High pick and roll right here, but it's designed to get Avila the ball. Let's freeze it, guys. See all these guys over here? That's all fluff. Now we got a little two-man action on the second side. And that's when Avila does his magic. Little back cut right there by Swope. Tries to throw it down. He'll shoot two free throws. That's their game, Fran. We'll see if they can get the lead here at the free throw line with 7.25 to go. You see that stat? 20 assists on 24 made free baskets, field goals. Huge. Pretty good, 80%. Yep. yep. I think Kansas led the country this year at about 69 or 70. And uh, on the other hand, give Seton Hall credit. They're on the road tonight, seemingly. And they've done a great job as well. Fun, I mean, fun, fun seven minutes. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I mean, there's three players who have over 100 assists on the season for Indiana State. Here's a little bit of a game summary for you. 17 for Dawes, leads all scorers tonight. And the Sycamores trying to overcome those 13 turnovers. Ten of them in the first half, though. They've got three here in the second half. Josh Schurz told Myron they had to clean that up, and they certainly have. Yep. Remember, the Pirates still playing without Bediaco, who's been saddled with four. Swope puts Indiana State up by two. Richmond with 16 today. Elijah Hutchins Everett misses on the three. It's tapped out, and Dawes has it. Dawes. Look at that. Serious. I'll tell you what, I love the way the Pirates drive it. And Dawes went to that other side of the rib, which we've seen good players do. And it threw the shot blocker off just a, just a little bit. Hard to defend that. 19 points now for Alamir Dawes. Bledson. Spent it into trouble. And they're discussing it. It's going to stay with Indiana State. Now, mind you, 3.6 on the shot clock. I guarantee you that Indiana State has a, has a low, we call it a low shot clock play right here. Watch Avila with the three. It's Julian Larry, and he's asked to put it up. Good defense by Seton Hall. I thought they would get a better shot, and uh, Seton Hall would not allow that. You play 38, 39, 40 games. The uh, opposing team usually has those late clock plays yep. that they've scouted. How about a congratulations to Josh Schertz, the Hugh Durham Coach of the Year Award winner, given to the best mid-major coach in the country. Amazing job. Yep. Got a great future. Defense! 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 
67 all here in the NIT Championship. Pirates have it. Dre Davis. Spinning no. Kent has it. Look at that ball run. Conwell. Too short there. This timed it. Great job by Hutchins Everett. Dawes got it knocked out of his hands to Davis. I'll tell you, the big fella, the transfer from Austin P, has been good. Yeah, Richmond misses on that. Conwell ahead of the pack for Julian Larry. Larry has a team high 18. Ediaco coming back in at the next whistle, Fran. You see him at the table. That's four personals. Oh, they go over the top to Richmond. What a feed and a foul. That pass from Elijah Hutchins Everett. I'm going to tell you, that's the pass of the night. What a pass by the young man who grew up in the shadows of Seton Hall. Look at that pass. What a catch and a chance at an end one. And I'm going to tell you now, they're bringing Bediaco back in. But Hutchins Everett has been excellent. You called it, Fran. Pass of the night for sure. And Richmond has now put Seton Hall in front. I mean, I, I know you want Pediaco back in, but I mean, that, guy, that guy's playing pretty good. Well, you got it. You got a two-headed monster now. Now Pediaco can play more freely. Pediaco left this game with 13-24 to go in the second half. Back in now with under five to go. Julian Larry shut off, and it's over to the Pirates. I'll tell you what he tried to do, Mike. He had Bediaco out on the perimeter, and he tried to pick up the fifth foul, but Bediaco moved his feet. They doubled, and then Larry just threw that ball away. He was throwing that ball to us. Yep. Right idea, but it didn't work out. And now you got Jaquan Sanders coming back in for Seton Hall. And Katari Richmond takes a seat. Well, he's, and it looked like he got banged up. Yeah, and he, he's going to be back in at the next TV timeout for sure. We're taking a look at him now. Yep, which is under four minutes to go. We've got 4.45 to play right now. Dylan Adewusu now pops up a three. Julian Larry. Watch this speed. Again, starting the drive. Tough. Rebound, Avila. With a pass to Kent. We say best cutter in college basketball. We can prove it. He gets six points a game on those kind of plays. The most in the country by far, according to Synergy. And Avila found it with a no look. Dawes. He's done that a lot tonight, but not this time. Rebound Avila, and here come the Sycamores with a one-point lead. Conwell, he extends it. <laughs> On his first made basket of the night, it's a three. Dawes from NBA range, it's not there. I love it. They've slowed the pace down. They're going to run. They're going to go to the bread and butter now. The half court spacing. Mismatch. Oh, man. From deep. Are you kidding? Swope. Is it Indiana State's year or what?
Superman in our college basketball studios. That's the student section at Grand Canyon getting ready to cheer for more than just their squad who did make the NCAA tournament. The best three-point shooters, the best dunkers in all of college basketball gathering in the Valley of the Sun. You'll see them all coming up next, fellas. That's right, Zubin. We're having too much fun here first uh, from Indianapolis. Hankel Fieldhouse, the NIT Championship, and it's the Sycamores by seven. Mike Corey, Fran Fraschilla, and Myron Metcalf. I think Craig Swope could be in that three-point shooting contest, but he's got other things on his mind. There's that second half. He had 15 in the second half. The other night, remember, he's playing with a torn meniscus that he'll have surgery on right after the season. That's the last thing he's worried about right now because he is dominating this second half. Richmond trying to come back for Seton Hall. Ball tapped around. It's loose. And it goes into the hands of Richmond, and he scores it. Well, they went to him on the post up. You saw the monster, which means the double team, and he still got a chance to go through it. It stops an 8-0 Indiana State run. We've had eight ties, 11 lead changes. Sycamore is here now with Swope. Shovels it over to Avila for three. It's no good. And here's Richmond again with his game-high 12th rebound. Dylan Adewusu. No, it was short. They knew it. Richmond now for three. Plenty of time, and he missed that one. It's tapped up by Bediaco. And it's out of bounds to Indiana State. Great looks. Now it's under two minutes, so they can review it. It looked like it was off Seton Hall, but they might as well check it because of the rule. Under two, take a peek, big possession. It is. It's a great idea to do that, Fran. You're right. Coach Hommel will make Yeah. Let's take a look. And there. There's that follow through by Ade Wusu, and you see Larry lets it go. And yeah. I believe this is going to be an easy monitor review. See that follow through? So they would need definitive proof to overturn it. I don't think it's there. Well, we'll see what they decide here. ESPN, the home for the women's final four tomorrow night. NC State taking on the number one seed, South Carolina, 36 and 0. That's at seven. And then UConn and Iowa. UConn 33 and 5, Iowa 33 and 4. The Bird Tarasi Show, that is tomorrow, 7 and 9 on ESPN2, ESPN Plus. It is going to be one incredible weekend in women's college basketball and the men's college basketball as well. It is awesome to be here in April. Yeah, and I think Bird and Tarasi would love this game tonight. Yep. Highly competitive, two excellent teams. And only a two possession game, so Seton Hall's got to stay. Discipline defensively. They have plenty of time here with a minute and 52 seconds remaining. It goes into the hands of Julian Larry. Avila fakes on the three. Three in the corner. That's no good by Swope. And here come the Pirates. I, I just, if I were Kadari Richmond, I just set up to get to the basket. Richmond's got 21. Off the screen, Dodds. Stripped out of his hands, they called a foul. And on the way up, well, it's going to be two shots here for Alamir Dawes. Interesting. Great little staggered double away for Dawes. And if he's not going to get behind the line and they chase him, he's a terrific curler into the lane. And now Josh Schertz has just realized that they called it a two-shot foul. And Dawes, who's got 19 points tonight, he's been outstanding. So is Richmond. Davis with 16. I mean, these Pirates and these leaders trying to bring them back. The lineup, the women's Final Four coming your way tomorrow night. Sunday night baseball, NHL, a huge weekend here on ESPN. We're just getting it started. By the way, don't foul Alamir Dawes because he's He's almost at 95% on the season. Avila for three. That was pretty quick there, Frank. Well, he's wide open, but this opens the door. We said that it was a two-possession game. Plenty of time. Richmond up to Dawes. He wants a three for the tie. He's got it! 
What a shot from Alamir Dawes with a game high 24 77 all. Unreal. Playing the best basketball of his career. He is unbelievable down the stretch of the season. And remember what he told us two weeks ago, Mike. I'm not going to let this season go and end it without everything I possibly can. Great pass. Gets his feet set behind the line. And he's been shooting 50% from three in the NIT. Playing in his last college game tonight, he has 105 points for the tournament. What a shot. We're tied at 77. Now, here's the dilemma for Josh Schurz, and it's, it's a good dilemma. Do you go two for one here? What does that mean? If we get a shot up pretty quickly, say by 42, that gives us two possessions to Seton Hall's one. Right. But they don't want to take a bad shot. So it's going to be very interesting to see what they do out of the timeout. Remember this, Mike. This coach is analytically based. He understands the numbers. Well, he certainly does, and it is going to be interesting here with 57.9 seconds to go. It's our ninth tie of the night. And Judy, go quickly. Here's Conwell. I think they're trying to. 50 seconds to go. Conwell kicks it. Julian Larry, it's a three. It's no good. Kent has it. His follow, that's no good. And Betty Yako for Seton Hall. They will get a second possession. Just get it across in their effort to just take some time here for the moment. Dawes to Davis. Into the hands of Richmond. He's been phenomenal. Six to shoot. Davis spinning, shooting, scoring. Seton Hall's got the lead. Here comes Larry with 14 seconds to go. Julian Larry to Conwell. No timeout yet. And here it is. Yep. With 8.1 seconds to go, Josh Schertz says we got to talk it over with his team down two. Indiana State, Mike, in the last two and a half minutes, got three or four good looks, and they didn't knock him down. But watch Davis. It's been Dawes, it's been Richmond, and it's been Davis all night the indianapolis native with a chance to seal seal the deal and win an nit title but we're gonna see what what his team calls a basketball einstein right now ensures let's see what they got fred your take a two a three what do you want here well your title on the line yeah you know them it's either layups or threes okay so let's just listen in. Hey, you came me out. We're looking for a look to the Hey, get by. Get by. Legal. Try to last. Legal. Hey, now everything that I saw on that board looks like it's going to be something to the basket. But. On a drive, if there's a kick out three, we know this team is very proficient at knocking it down. Seton Hall is on a 9 nothing run. It was 77-70, Indiana State, and now their fans with 8.1 seconds to go on eggshells to see if they can either tie or win this championship on this possession. The two guys you got to keep in mind now, Swope and Conwell. Top of the key, right elbow. Out of timeouts, by the way, if you're Indiana State. Bledson to put it in. Here comes Swope. He's got it. Tries to launch at the three. There's no call. He gets his block by Bediaco. It's tapped around. There's still two seconds to go. It's Caldwell for the win. No! And Seton Hall wins the 2024 NIT Championship.
The largest run of the game that Seton Hall went on was a 9-0 run, and they did it to end the game and win the championship. It, it was a game of runs, Mike. First half, second half. And give Seton Hall credit. They got the stops down the stretch. Big shots. Unbelievable. What a performance by both teams in the NIT. Respect. Watch the last possession. Swope, after a lot of fluff, comes off the screen, loses it first, gets it back. And then this one looked like it was good when Conwell let it go. The magical season for Indiana State comes to a close with 32 wins, 32 and 7. But Seton Hall, with 25 wins, gets the NIT championship from Hinkle Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. We hope you can join it. Thanks so much for being with us all tournament long. It's been a pleasure to be able to bring it to you. Jeff Nelson with stats, with Myron Metcalf, Frank Rochilla, Mike Corey. So long from Indianapolis. Thanks for watching.